an entire world is ready for you to start your career teaching the path to wellness. Mastering the science of mindfulness and the art of coaching to help clients achieve mental, emotional, and physical betterment of life through movement, nutrition, recovery, and regeneration. Because impacting one person impacts a family. Impacting a family impacts a community. And impacting a community impacts the world. Become an NASM Certified Wellness Coach. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today... I'm reaching into the mailbox. Actually, I got this message earlier today, and then I went on a mad scramble to put together content based off the email because I thought it was such an interesting topic. So I'm going to read you the email by Seth. So Seth says, hi, Rick. I've listened to every single episode of the NASM CPT podcast, and I really appreciate how you deliver useful information and training advice in an accessible, easy to understand manner. Thank you. All right. He goes on to say, I have a question for you. You might be interested in a podcast episode. I am recently certified CPT, nutrition coach, and corrective exercise specialist. I want to start working as a trainer, but I expect to move out of state next summer. How can I develop a meaningful training practice in the next nine months while also setting up both my clients and myself for success when I move away? I look forward to hearing from you, Seth. I want to say thank you so much for this email, and I will uh, I'll shoot you an email back in return and and um, direct you towards this episode. But with that said, I think a lot of us have questions that are very similar. Uh, I want to work, but I also have this big thing coming up. That's like uh, getting a new job, but also knowing that you have a vacation coming up. And you have to actually say those words, right? You have to let your new employer know that you have a vacation coming up. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on that vacation. So the words have to be used. And and if you're asking my opinion on this, this, oh my goodness, this, you know, I say it all the time. It depends. But I think there are a few considerations that we should look into. So let's get into talking about at least some of these. And the number one thing that I'm going to say is do not slow down building your business where you are. Don't, don't slow down. Don't be like, well, I'm only going to be here until next summer. uh, So maybe I don't start building. No, no, no. I go hard in the paint, building your business. Go. Because here's a couple of things. One, you need practice. You got to practice. If you haven't built your business yet, you need practice building business. If you have built your practice, you need to continue building that practice. You need to continue building those clients. Not only does it give you the opportunity to train on how to do that, but there's an opportunity for you to be able to continue working with those people. So continue your marketing, continuing your PR, continue your networking, And that's going to help you lay the groundwork for the future. So here's a little thing for your future clients. Um, You start building your clients and then go on a trip with a plan to train them remotely. So that might just be I'm taking a few days off, but take a few days off knowing that you are going to be present to train remotely. Because what you want to do is really encourage your clients to remotely train with you when they are away too. So you're setting it up. I'm going to go away. I'm going to train. Uh, You're going to go away. I want you to train while you're away. Sometimes this fits into a schedule. Sometimes it simply doesn't. There, uh, There are time zone issues. I have a client that's away in Europe right now. Very difficult for us, but we're able to get it uh, remotely done while he's in Europe. When he's in Asia, forget about it. It's near impossible for us to make that work out for both of our schedules. But you're setting this up yourself. I plan on going away. I'm currently training people. I'm going to go away with the express purpose of getting them to train remotely. 
Because once you get them into training remotely, many of which might say, I don't know, I don't know, I'm really not the remote kind of training person. Uh, and, and that's not the case for everyone because the, the pandemic has changed so much on how we perceive things. But I think you're going to be able to, to at least pull a few into remote training also when they go away. And again, like I said, it lays the groundwork for continuing training your clients, but it hopefully starts to lay that groundwork for after you move. You've moved away, they're out of town, whatever it is. And once you're gone, you're starting, you've already set up that you can train remotely and give them excellent sessions that you can do remote work, that you can still program the training protocols. You can still help them hit their goals, but you're just doing it remotely. And that can be two types of training. One could be this one-on-one -on -one virtual training. And then certainly you can also continue to write out programs and then they pay you to develop programs that they follow ongoing. So I also think, again, laying the groundwork for your future, you should start planning out what future location you plan on working at. So right now you live in one place. This person is moving out of state. So you need to start identifying what's in the area and where you can work once you go there. What are the options that are available? And go through and look at their websites and learn about their culture and find out their mission, vision, and values and see which relate best to you. And then certainly try to find a way to have a conversation with somebody that you can identify, okay, well, what are the pay structure like? How far away from where you plan on moving to where this place is? Get that groundwork set. So scout out where you plan to work. But also you should reach out to businesses in the area. And I think the first thing you should probably do is, is reach out to business networking groups that are in your area in advance. So the place that you're going to move. Now, these business networking places, they usually have, you know, maybe uh, a dozen, two dozen people in the networking group, all of different uh, industry. So there might be a general contractor and an attorney and an accountant and uh, a tailor and a personal trainer. And that's what you want. You want to be in a group of people where you, new to the area, can start networking with people. And, and most of these groups, they do not allow more than one of any particular uh, job skill, right? So they're not going to be two attorneys in a group, right? They're not going to be two accountants. So what you do is you join with this group and you are the only personal trainer in this networking group. So that way, anybody in this group, when they are out talking to people and they find out that somebody wants to get fit, somebody wants to, to lose weight, somebody has um, an excessive bend and they keep jutting forward and they talk about how their neck juts forward and they don't like it, whatever it is, and they can say, hey, I know somebody. It's in my group, my networking group. He is a personal trainer. She is a personal trainer. They focus on this and that. And so whatever it is, they basically are your billboards. And of course, when you're working with your clients and somebody was like, I could really, you know, I don't know. I, I, I just moved to the area. I need a, a physiatrist or a general practitioner. You're like, oh, I got one in my networking group. I really think is great. You should meet with them. All right. So this is how the networking groups work. So start networking, start looking for some of those business networking groups so that you can start to integrate yourself into the fabric of that community. Also, I think that if you haven't done this already, that you should develop a social media presence. Stay with me. A social media presence primarily for work. Social media presence primarily for work. So what most of us do is we post kids' birthday parties, first day of school, last day of school, uh, funny things, and then me working out, and then funny things and a cat video, and then me working out, or tips and fitness tips and uh, ideas that you can start to integrate into your workouts, and look how my flip-flops tore when I was out on the beach, and so we get a a variety of things, none of which necessarily is focused on what you do as a fitness professional. Now, what I like to do or like to think I do is I, I put a lot of, actually, I'm not as, as vocal on social. You know how I do. I'm like 
hit it hard for three or four weeks. And then I'm like, mm, I don't know if I like this. Uh, but, but what I do is I tend to say this is primarily a business page with my family stuff sprinkled in. So people that follow me for the content can also relate to me as a person. So that might be something that you're interested in doing. But if you have a page where it's just all over the place, then I'm going to say either switch how you load content up or get a whole different site, a whole different page, whether that's Instagram or Facebook or whatever it is that you're using, and then gear that specifically and primarily towards your fitness stuff. And so that way, that can be a calling card for your fitness. And then when you start to do promotions, you can do that based on geolocation. And you can start building those promotional aspects in your new location before you even get there, which is pretty brilliant. So uh, there's a part of that, well, all part of this and kind of networking uh, for the new place you're going to. Now, let's go back again. When you leave, here's the thing. Your clients may continue to work remotely with you, but if they do not, make sure they in, are in good hands of another trainer that you trust, that you feel very comfortable with. Because if you want to know what's best for your clients, and the clients aren't going to continue to go remotely, then I think it's vitally important that you have a good trainer that you know and trust that can help your clients reach their goals. I mean, ultimately, we're in this to help people. And if you're no longer around to help people, you should definitely move them over to another trainer that can help them reach their goals. So uh, connect with other trainers. They'll know that you're leaving and they'll be very nice to you. <laughs> and they know that you're leaving and they may be getting your clients. So uh, you also may want to let them know that you're going to train them from time to time remotely, that you'd like to still work with them from time to time remotely, and that when you come back in town for visits, that you'd like to still get a session in. Now, don't step on the toes of the new trainer, but you guys have set up quite the relationship. And when I ever have a client that says, oh, so-and-so, my trainer from back in the day is back in town. I'm going to do a session with them. Go for it. Have fun. Have fun. But that's the kind of stuff that can also keep you on your toes as a personal trainer. If you know that somebody else is going to be training now your clients and their old trainers coming back, maybe you do a little less calling in the sessions and you do a lot more focus on how your client can benefit from your session. All right, so that's it. That's the old place. Let's go back to the new place. When you're in your new place, I want you to think about being seen within the community. And this goes beyond that networking group. I think that you should reach out to a few corporations and just have a, a, a one page kind of highlight reel of things that you would like to provide. And that could be things like an, uh, lunch and learns, which I think are great things. A lot of businesses will say, hey, we're going to have a lunch and learn, a personal trainer who's focused on this, this, and that is going to be coming in. And while you eat lunch within the, the lunchroom or that common area that people eat, this person, she's going to be talking about nutritional goals, which makes them all order salad for that day, or they're going to be focused on the benefits of kettlebell training or whatever it is that your primary focus on and do these lunch and learns within these corporations. It allows you to get out within that community. I think you should also consider doing promotional workouts, workouts for free in the park. Uh, enroll in a community that is meaningful to you. And I'll give you an example. Mine would be the American Diabetes Association chapter in whatever place that I plan on moving. So that's a meaningful to me. And so if I'm going to move to a new place, I want to build a community to be able to provide something. And this isn't give for free, right? Like, I mean, you are, you are giving it for free, but not because your time isn't worth it, but because the purpose of you donating your time is worth it. What you're doing it for is of value to you as a fitness professional. And then what comes back to you may be business, but it is also starting to develop and create, um, you know, weave you into the fabric of the community there. And your name gets to be known, what you're interested in, who you work with, how you work with people, the way that you deliver your sessions, 
the the vibe that you give and how people relate to you starts to build. So if you want to really find yourself in a new community that you can be a part of, that I think is highly, highly valuable. Things of purpose. So don't stop building your business where you are. Keep building, keep pushing. And if you can bring people with you and they can do remote training and you can do programming for them, that's fantastic. But also look ahead to where you're going to go and start integrating yourself into that community before you even get there. And by the time you get there, people in the that chapter of the American Cancer Society, American Heart Association, whomever it is, the, the school or, or church youth groups or wherever, whatever you plan on doing, you already have planted seeds. You already have people ready for you when you show up to start being a part of what you're trying to build. All right. I hope you found this helpful. Seth, I hope you found this helpful. And because of that question, many other people may have said, you know, that's pretty good. And even if you're not moving anywhere, you're like, why aren't I doing these things currently where I am? And start building your business and start integrating yourself into the community that you're in. Thank you so much for, for listening. I appreciate you. Like, share, subscribe. Make sure your fitness friends and family know about the podcast. If there's anything I can do for you, like I did with Seth, reach out to me. He reached out to me at my email, rick.richie at nasm.org. Or you can DM me uh, at dr.rickrichie on Instagram. Keep inspiring people to fitness. I appreciate it. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.